Welcome everyone. It's day number 15, number 15 of 21 days and we're discussing the belief in lack and how it's been creating suffering. And I'd like to add that we're not doing anything wrong. We are just slightly misinformed. And this is why the 21 days has been offered, so we can get things into perspective. Oh, Laurie's here. Hello, Laurie. I trust you will inform us if the sound is good. Hello, Raf, sounds great. I am particularly excited. While we wait for other people to come on board, let me entertain you. So I'm particularly excited. As soon as this ends, I'm off to the airport to collect Marie. She is on her way home and the excitement cannot be contained. So be prepared. <laughs> I'm not going to rush through this. It is my intention that today is the first day of this last week to get all of this into perspective. And this unfolding of the three parts literally just happened on its own. What I noticed is as things were unfolding, you know, speaking about misconceptions, and there were seven that I came across and I've shared with you, the misconceptions of how it is so that we're actually believing that there's an experience happening and with the definitions and the imagery that appears and then the indication of a feeling and the point of reference and that's how we get the feeling. And then all of a sudden, the second week sort of went through, you know, what daily practices can there be in order to become aware of how it is so that these things are happening and appearing in your reality and who it is, who is it that knows and that is allowing this to happen. And that just unfolded into uh, seven daily practices that I preferred. And all of them, as you can see, has got everything to do with noticing. And I pointed out seven different points, characteristics that you can notice. You can notice how you're feeling when you're imagining. You can notice how you're feeling when you're triggered. You can notice thoughts. You can notice while in med meditation in the yogi position. You can notice thoughts while walking around. You can notice how other people are behaving and see what perspective they are holding. So I hope that those two um, posts that I wrote up, the one of the seven misconceptions and the seven daily tasks, are very, 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 very powerful. Um, as you can see, nothing really out of this world okay and yes it can it be that simple ref absolutely absolutely this is obvious and the obvious is obviousness is just being unfolding as we are speaking so what would i like to dedicate this last week You two will be together again. She is always with me, always with me. And strangely enough, you said that because it has been a whole week that I've been imagining myself at the airport. I already know where I'm going to park and I already know where the best place to park because there's a ramp so the suitcase can come down. I already know that I have a parking ticket and I get two hours for free and that's already in my bag. I already know, I already know why, because I've prepared myself with images and this is exactly what, this is actually quite a good example. So what we're gonna be discussing is what would your experience look like if you weren't so attached and identified, misidentified, misinformed that you believe to be the character so the character that's about to go to the airport is going to have the experience or is the character going to the airport part of the experience? All right, so that's why I've been um, emphasizing, oh, I love it when words just drop in, emphasizing that it is imperative that you notice who is creating, who is seeing, who is moving the focus onto different elements. 
It is not you. And this is the misconception, the prime misconception. When you believe to be the character that has all of these definitions, perceptions, very, very limiting, isn't it? Because it's meant to be that way. The character has always been what it needs to be in the moment for you then to have the experience, you seeing this experience, allowing consciousness to flow through you and see this experience, to then become aware that, hey, this character, oh, we could add that in and we could take that away and we could put this in. So let me just get clear. So just try and imagine that you are sitting or you're aware, like in a dream, um, you're aware of an empty space and this empty space is all white. Like you can't hardly distinguish walls or anything. You just sort of see this space. But a body and a mind is nowhere to be seen. It's just the, the seeing is happening. So the body is, you're unaware of it. All you're seeing is this. Now, that's pretty general, isn't it? What am I seeing, darling? What am I seeing? White. There's just white. A lot of light. So now, there's seeing. Seeing is happening. Okay? Noticing. And obviously, not very entertaining. Hey, just white. All of a sudden, now there's this interest. Focus. These are one of the amazing abilities you have. You have the ability to focus, and you have the ability to imagine. Then you have this incredible mind. The mind is a tool that then defines, oh, 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 what's the definition? Definitions is like the outlining of a drawing. That's what definitions does. So now you've got this focus that you want to now focus what? Attention. You want to focus attention, conscious attention onto something particular. And that happens all the time. I don't know if any of your friends or family have ever showed you like an old photograph from school. There's like 30 people standing in different positions all like this and the photo gets taken. And you sort of look at it generally and then you say, where are you? It's like you're now you're focusing on something particular. You're interested. You're like zooming in. So this is what happens. And now I'm talking from the perspective that you now know you're not this character, okay? So, focus wants to, like, engage with something. And all of a sudden now, because of this interest, just imagine now a box drops into the photograph, like drops into this white space. You're excited. Focus has now got something to focus on. <gasps> box! Box. Okay. Box. Oh, box. Oh, box. Box. Empty box. You see where I'm going with this? So, first there was focus. You just wanted to focus on something, and a box appeared. There's structure. There's an outline. You were excited to see the box, because now there's, like, something for you to focus on. And then as you're looking at it, as you're looking at it, it occurs to you, it's an empty box. And this is what we go through. We get so excited with creating our lives and the character walks in. Oh, exciting, exciting. And then you notice, oh, something's missing. It's empty. And we go, oh. Because every experience is not there just to be permanently there. Like you didn't want to just you be dropped into life and saying, okay, you've got everything we think you're going to need here and now be content with it. That wasn't the intention. So what I came to realize is that as, as a, we've, I've been growing older in, into this like life experience, it occurred to me that things are being invented and then all of a sudden, other things are being invented from inspiration from the first one. So imagine one lady noticing, oh, dust everywhere. I wish I could, you know, collect it all and throw it out. And the broom was invented. Oh, the 
broom. And now sweeping is being enjoyed. Oh, getting rid of, oh, this is so easy. This is so easy. All of a sudden, a few years ago, I'm like, darn, I've got to sweep, you know. The excitement is over, you know, the box, ah! And then it's an empty box. And then what, after like noticing all these housewives sweeping, 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 and not enjoying it as the first time they discovered the broom, what was inspired? No one just, just fell down on the floor and started crying. What was inspired by that, seeing these old women sweeping their whole life? The vacuum cleaner. So much easier. You can get rid of all the dust in half the time. It was inspired. But was the broom a limitation? No. We don't need to. Is the box empty? No. The box now is an inspiration. What can I use it for? What can I use it for? The identifying the fact that it is empty wasn't your in your awareness before. First, there was the excitement of the box. And then after thorough investigation, you've noticed now, what can I use it for? What can I put in it? All right. So there's this awareness that it is. And now what can it become? It is. What can it become? It is. What can it become? Or it is. What can it become? It isn't. It is. Oh, my God, it is. It is. You see? And this is the misconception that when you're identified as the box and you just say, I'm just an empty box. No, 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 no. You're part of the experience. This is part of the experience. It is that which is holding the box and you're seeing you're holding the box. But now, because you believe to be the box, I am empty. I am a useless, empty box. Okay? So this is where creating experiences becomes so, so juicy. When you actually see that this is in the picture with the empty box. And what allows you to actually have the experience isn't the fact that you believe to be this. What is allowing you to actually tap into the experience is the feeling. Without the feeling, if you didn't have a feeling, you wouldn't know you were having an experience of the box or the empty box. The box, the excitement of the box, then the empty, that, that when you discover the empty feeling, it's like, oh, something's missing. But it's not, oh, something's missing because I'm the one with the empty, as the empty box. No, you're the creator, you're the painter that says, oh, empty box, what can I do with it? You see? So now you are in an experience. What you define as your life experience. And you've roamed around this world, you know. And now you've got, you've always, always wanted that kind of job. And now you've got it. And now it's like, oh, I don't want to go to work anymore. But the job was the box. It's this general outline. You went there to discover what it is that can I, what can I learn? Who am I going to meet? What am I going to do? How are things going to unfold? You were curious when you, when you were young, you went there and that is like part of the discovery. I've discovered a box. Then you work there for a couple of years, two, three, 20 years have gone by, and the, em the box has now been discovered. It's empty. What would it inspire you to? What has this experience brought out? What emptiness have you discovered? All right. So... I've never really, the jobs I've done in the past, it was like a, it was this coincidence that every three years there would just be, I'm leaving. And I would do complete, something completely different. Like it had, it didn't ever have a consistency of like an actual topic, you know. I've always been, I don't know, a mechanic and I've been a mechanic everywhere. No, no, it's just like being completely different experiences, completely. So, 
what I'm trying to convey here is that you cannot bring awareness to a complete picture. The, com the picture is constantly, 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 constantly being expanded and created. But you, in order to have the awareness over here, you need to first become aware of the empty box. But before becoming aware of the empty box, you need to become aware of the box. And now that you're aware of the box, and then you become aware that it's an empty box, now there's an awareness that you say, well, what can I use it? What can I put in it? Right. So the feeling, without the feeling, remember, when there's a feeling, there, the feeling is an indication of a particular, unique signature, signature vibrational frequency. All right? And as we said in the previous videos, Every signature of a frequency gives birth to definitions because now it's defining this frequency. It's defining this platform. The mind, as the tool, is now defining so you have a general outlook of where you've landed. This is the experience you're about to embark on. So, first, there is the vibrational signature of your address, this is where we've landed. And now the description, <gasps> box, ah, box, excitement, all right? Your experience. And now as more you define, you define, you define, you define, and the definition is like doing an, you know when you start drawing, you first get the black marker and you sort of outline, the outline of it. You've got a general outline. And that's what definitions are. You're defining, you're defining it. And the more you define it, as you're drawing and you're drawing more, an image comes into focus. So now you can actually see it in your mind's eye. And as you're drawing, you're like, oh, yes. And now I'll add in that color. I'll get a green and I'll color it in. And then I'll get this and then I'll color it in. All right. So now there's imagery coming in. And now you're looking, and now you're having an experience. You've put in elements, and what are these elements? So, that we're coming out and describing. And now, opinions, perspectives, beliefs of who this character thinks it is in this experience. All right? So, thinking is arising. What thoughts are arising? Equivalent to the vibrational signature. Remember, you can only have descriptions to the equivalent of that vibrational state. So thoughts that are equivalent to that frequency will arise. Okay? And then you'll have images equivalent to that frequency will be seen. And then actions that are inspired by that same, and then that's what you will do. And you will have this experience. But the moment you believe you are that, what are you getting? You're getting a temporary indication saying, hey, there's more to this picture. What is this experience inspiring you to? And everyone comes like, I don't have enough. What did Laurie say yesterday? I'm not rich yet. <gasps> I'm not rich yet. It's an empty box. I'm not rich yet. Fine. So now that the pain has hit you, It's an indication. An indication. What is it indicating? That source is saying there's more to the story, darling. It's not just an empty box. Right? That's why you get a lot of athletes that always quote, fear has always helped me. Because it's an indication. It's an indication that you have hit a realization. This has made you aware of what you can do with the empty box. You can add in new elements. You can put this in the box and you could do that with the box. And if you close the box, then you could do that with the box and you could store another box. Right? The indication of this lack is telling you that this experience has just served you to inspire you to something more. If you didn't get that indication, you'd live there eternally, happily. 
you just say, this is where I live and this is where I live forever. I, I like it here. But because you're getting an indication, this experience has served its purpose. You're done. And you say, what? Well, no, you won't be left with this Oh, You know what you'll be left with? Let this experience now, why is it hurting you? Because you've had discovered that I'll never be rich. Yes, you'll never be rich here, living here, no. Living at that signature frequency, that's not going to happen. That's why it's easy to say for me, the character that inspired you to the desire that you want will never be the same character that will live out that experience. And I've worded it that will never achieve it, meaning it won't have the experience. The character that has now identified and lived out this experience on this vibrational frequency has served its purpose. That's why it's imperative that you discover and realize you're not the character. You will be the observer, the witness to an infinite versions of characters. When you marry yourself just to one, that will be your experience. Do you want to marry yourself to one character? Because every character is there to identify the box. And then when it realizes it's an empty box, meaning that something is not there, meaning that something can be added, but who can live out the experience with the box and something added into it? A different vibrational frequency, meaning different perspectives need to be there in order to be then defined and imagined and experienced. The character that is currently believing in the perspective and is feeling what is feeling and is defining what is defining cannot now live the experience with the, the box with something in it because the box with something in it has a completely different vibrational signature. I could finally make it to see you live. Thank you. Are we all on board, darlings? Are you getting my drift? So what do we do with this information? Right. So we've now discovered, I like Laurie's um, example. I'm not rich. So this is the box. I'm not rich. It's empty. There's no money inside it. Therefore, the meaning-making machine said, no money in box means you're not rich. I'm not rich. And just imagine Laurie standing there with her box, looking at the empty box. Means I'm not rich. Oh, I'm not rich. Oh, my goodness, I'm not rich. Oh, despair, I'm not rich. Not rich, not rich. And the feeling just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until someday... Laurie's going to go like, oh, with hell with this empty box. And that's what my wish is for you, where you just sort of realize that you're done thinking this. You're done. These, these thoughts are just, the more I think it, the more I feel bad. The more I think it, the more I feel less. The more I think it, the more I feel sad. The more I think it, the more I feel depressed. The more I think it, I am nobody. And that is the result. How long do you need to realize when are you going to be ready to just ask yourself, what would that feel like? And that's why you have the ability to imagine, to question, knowing who you know to be, the noticing, the awareness. You've now noticed that this character has come to its end of its abilities. His ability, his main perspective of the character was to identify the box and then to identify that there's, the box is empty, meaning you've come to the end of this perspective and what it is capable of doing. So now the perspective, I'm not good enough, is held. So I am good enough is something in the box. I am rich. But now, in order to have definitions, that's a general statement, I am rich. Now let's add some elements. Where can you add this element? 
you come back to who you are, the painter. And that's where imagination is vital. So as you can see, there's a step for everything. There's a step for you to actually have the experience, define it, image it, and live it out. For then for you to observe the emptiness in each box. And now you've got elements. <gasps> I saw the box and there's something missing. What could be missing? And now you write down that element. And in this box, something's missing. You write down that element that you perceive as missing. I'm not rich. I want to be rich. <gasps> rich. That's an element. Let's jot that down. Mm. And then worthiness. You've discovered some form of emptiness, some form of lack, some form of I wasn't aware of this before. You weren't aware of it. You weren't aware of it. So now that you've accumulated these elements, now imagination is where you retrieve yourself from the character who you believe to be, but in a meditation or at a... When you are as you are as awareness in meditation, you're vibrating at a completely different frequency because the character is limited to a certain frequency. When you step out of the character because you've served its purpose, now in meditation, you're now feeling the oneness of who you are. You're not feeling the limitations of the character. And from here, and from here, and I believe there's names for these, like Delta, um, oh, the words don't appear. Um, beta, Alpha, yeah. So these different frequencies, that's why they say when you're in meditation, I think someone actually measured that. Who was that chappy? They measured him. I think it was Deepak Chopra. That he went into meditation and they were measuring him. Was it him? I'm not sure. And so in meditation, he's at a completely different frequency. And from here, the joy of meditating on what? The joy of imagining these elements in place, in the box. You're now imagining the box with the element you perceived was missing before. Remember, in order to have an experience, the feeling must be there first. So we, first, number one, we need to create the feeling. What would it feel like to have the box with the goodies inside? In Laurie's case, the money. I'm not rich. I want to be rich. So money's inside or whatever is that, just, you know, metaphorically speaking. So now... You're out as the character with the empty box, but now you're in imagination with the box with the goodies inside. So the goodies inside the box is your imagination. The empty box that inspired you to the imagination is the experience you call reality. We're there? So, the amount of time that you dedicate to the imagination and allowing yourself to feel the inclusion, the inclusion of the desire in the box. While you're feeling it, you're vibrating it. You're vibrating it while you're feeling it. Because if you're feeling it, you're vibrating. If you're vibrating, you're feeling it. If you're vibrating, you're feeling it. And what allows you to feel that way is the imagery. Without the imagery, there is no excitement. Can you feel that? The only reason why I'm excited to go to the airport, because I have an image of being there at a certain time, waiting for the doors to open, and seeing Marie come out. It's not Marie that's arriving that's making me excitement. It's the image I have in my head right now. And I've planned this for weeks. Will I bring flowers? Will I not bring flowers? What will I wear? Should I go cut my hair? Should I not cut my hair? You see? It's the imagery that creates the excitement. But let's say my imagery is one of, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be there on time. Will I find parking? What am I going to do? Now, what if the imagery is now that? Is it going to be excitement? No, there's going to be worry. There's going to be anxiousness. 
Can you see? But the only reason I have an imagery here is because I've managed to define it over and over and over again for weeks. I've been describing what I would like. Do I want to describe that I'm going to worry that I'm not going to be there on time? I'm not going to find parking? Or is my describing the imagery of what I actually want? Am I going to focus on the empty box or am I going to focus on the box with the goodies inside? Now, I have two pictures, but if I know that I'm the one looking at the two pictures, the empty box, the box with the goodies inside, the do I want to get there on time, do I not want to get there on time, am I there on time? Am I there on time? Yes. That's the imagery now I am now putting details. Arriving at airport on time. Done. That is the detail, that's an experience, that's a, an element one of the elements I'm putting into my imagination, I will be there at the airport on time. I'm there on time. Parking. I'm going to put it in. I don't find parking. I do find parking. I'm putting it in. I'm putting it into the script. It's going in. It feels good to be there on time. The so parking is there. I'm there on time. Should I cut my hair or not cut my hair? Mm. I'll cut my hair. And you put that element in there. And slowly but surely, as you're defining the emptiness and the goodies inside, the imagery is now coming. Now, I've envisioned arriving at the airport <clears throat> on time and the enthusiasm for a week now. It feels like I've already had the experience, to be honest with you. And therefore, I'm on that platform. And when she actually arrives, I'm going to walk into that experience. You walk into it. You're walking into it. You know why? Because I'm ready. I'm ready for it. I've envisioned it. I've defined it. I've planned it. I've taken elements that I prefer and not prefer, and I've put it into my script. I haven't been there hoping. Hoping I'm going to be there on time is also part of the script. Do I prefer it? No. I, I'm going to be there on time is part of the script. That's the one I prefer. Why? Because it feels in alignment feels better hoping and knowing are two different and who are you you're the knowing you're not the hoper you're the knowing you're the knower you're not the hoper so i put all these elements in when not when I'm believing to be the character playing out my scene. The character inspired me. I do that just before I go off to bed, when I've meditated and I've come into touch with who I really am from the standpoint of the witnesser, the noticer. Because in order to have an experience, you need to have an observer and you need to know yourself as the observer quantum physics coming out of me. I am the observer. I am not the character. The character, this body, this face, is part of the experience. It's part of one of the elements. What is it going to look like? Will it have cut hair or short hair? Will it have blue sweater or green sweater? What will it have? You're in the picture, the you you believe to be, but the observer of it all. And this is how it's all been. The first, first thing is to ignite the feeling of the desire. Because the empty box sprung forth your desire to put goodies inside. I don't have enough, I want enough. So now it's sprung forth the desire but now the desire is up in the air. Okay. In order to have the experience of the desire, the first thing in order, the first element of experience is what? Without the feeling, you don't know whether you're having it or not. So let's bring in and land on that frequency. And where do you do that? Not as this character, blessed soul, because this character, all it knows how to do is vibrate at this frequency, 1.0. Right? The desire is now asking you to vibrate at 2.0, darling. 
So can the character imagine? Character doesn't imagine. It doesn't even know it can imagine. The imagining is when you're not playing out character. When? Meditation. The character is a belief. You've got to step back. And now begin defining. What are definitions? Are thoughts. Thoughts, 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 then creates a belief. I will be there on time. I am rich. I am rich. But are you just going to birth, I am rich? No. You're not ready for that kind of frequency. 1.0 vibrates like this. 2.0 vibrates like this. You've got to get, you ready for that kind of, are you ready for that kind of movement inside of you? So that's why imagination sort of preps you. Let's prep you up for this speed, darling. Let's get speedy. So if you're not having the experience, I am rich, it's because you're not ready for the speed. How do you get ready? You've got to practice. Practice it. Spend some time in imagination. And that is your daily routine. I notice the box. I notice the box is empty. Oh, what can I put in it? And so you, you have 24 hours. But what sort of went wrong? And I don't think it actually went wrong. I think we're, we're just misinformed. If you were informed, you would have been doing this. So because of the misinformation, there's a lot of struggling and rushing around, trying to do these things so you can become this person. There's very linear thought. And this poor character is never, ever, ever going to have that experience. Because it's not up to speed. It's not ready. You are not ready to be up to speed with it. That's why the person that desired the broom was not up to speed with the vacuum cleaner yet. Because all it was aware of is dust and it needs to get out. Okay? It wasn't aware of the time it was, you know, dedicating to this endeavor. And then it became aware, the character, I could be doing so much more. I've got to sweep again. And then the desire of the vacuum clean in the box became, we became aware of it. Do you see what I mean? You can't just jump ahead. We had no idea back in the day that we would then require something called an aeroplane. They were pretty happy walking for months to get from North Carolina to New York. Do you know what I mean? Pretty happy. That's it. Then all of a sudden, oh, the horse. Then all of a sudden, oh, the cart. Then all of a sudden, oh, I can put a motor. You see, all of these things appeared due to awareness of the emptiness of the box. They were happy with box and then realized, oh, it's empty. Lack. All right. There's this perception of the belief of lack that inspires you to a different platform. So, what makes imagination easy? Number one, not believing you're the character because the poor character can't do the imagination. It doesn't focus. It is not conscious. It is an image appearing in front of you. This is in front of you. Believe it or not, you are not this. You are seeing this. All right? So first of all, imagination to be really, 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 really easy, you're not this. Discover who you really are. Realize that you are noticing the thoughts that arise, noticing the box. You're the one noticing and becoming aware of the emptiness of the box and now becoming aware of the desire that the emptiness of the box inspired you to. I'm not rich. I want to feel rich. What does that feel like? And that feeling is on another vibrational frequency. It's another vibrational signature. So how do I feel it? You have the ability to feel anything on a dime. Right now, right here. I feel the excitement of Marie already there at the airport with me. I have, and I've been feeling it for a week. The inclusion of your desire. The very thing that inspired you and made you feel lack is the very, very definition that will inspire you to the other side of the coin. 
I don't have enough. I have enough. Now that's an element. That is an element to put into your imagination. First of all, the very, very perspective that will inspire the feeling. I have enough. You've got your first element. You've got your very, very first element to make the transition to now living out that experience of the box of the goodies inside. It's the first element you need is the frequency. You've got to get ready for that. You've got to get ready. It's a different speed, people. It's a different speed. You're not going to be traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. Now, you're going to be traveling at 60. Are you going to be traveling at 200? No, darlings. We don't, it will terrify the living crap out of you if you're going to go from 40 to 200. It's just way, 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 way too fast. You know, when Marie and I started traveling, we were pretty happy. <gasps> airplane! And we're on an airplane. All of a sudden, it's like economy class. Oh, wrong kind of people. Oh, leg room now. So then there was this desire. No, no. Let's get an upgrade, you know. And then that's how it's sort of, well, we were pretty happy at the beginning, you know, just gallivanting around the world and da-da-da-da. Now there's desire for, hang on, I wasn't aware of this. I'd like this. And we've literally got to the point now, we want a private jet. That's it. I'm not standing in line anymore. I'm not going through security. I'm done. Just want to get out of the car and get on a private jet. That's another frequency to economy class or first class. Or even having a charter plane or whatever. There's still the security part that ah, I became aware of that I just don't want to experience. But it's a completely different platform. It is beautiful to imagine, but not as this character. This character will not be the one. This character says, oh, you're not worthy for that yet, or something to that degree. But it doesn't scare the living shit out of me, because I just see the other side of the coin. Oh, that's a good element to put in my imagination. I am worthy. I am very worthy. The first element to discover in your whole experience here is what feeling would that experience require and how are you going to get that information is by seeing the perspective that is currently holding you on to this platform and noticing the other side of the coin oh, you can see both of them and use that as your new element for your imagination and tomorrow i'll give you the second element oh, I'm right on time but are you getting the sense of it in order to just say imagine, this is really, really general, and it used to really aggravate me. What do you mean imagine? And it was just like something like, how do I get this into perspective? And it's just like drawing a painting for the first time. You need to have the outline in order to see, in order to start seeing an imagery of what it is that you're imagining. Let's get the elements, generally speaking, first, and where do you need to begin? First, you need to identify what platform you want to land on. And how do you get that from the other side of the coin, from the one you're currently believing? I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. I'm not a good trader. I'm not a good person. I'm not good at that. What's the other side of the coin? I am a good trader. I am a good person. I am a what? You see, the other side of the point. Now, you got that. Do you believe it immediately? No, darling. We need to be ready. Let's get ready for this. Okay? It's fine, but you've got your first element. You've got your first element. You've got a general outline of what that would feel like. So, first of all, write down all your first elements. So look at the ones that are creating the extreme pain for you right now. What is it? You all know because you're all believing in some sort of, sort of lack. You're all looking at an empty box. You're all tired or you're not excited about a box anymore. You're all looking at the empty box. Write them down. Let's start with this. Get at least three. Three empty boxes that you're perceiving right now in your experience. And let's, you've got a notebook, yeah? 
So write this down in the notebook. The very, very first element is the perspective you're holding now that's allowing you to have this experience that you're landed on this platform. And let's look at the other side of the coin and jot that down. Once you've got that definition, that new perspective, that new belief, now you're giving the spinal cord to the new character in a sort of way. You're creating a new character, darlings. So creating this new character, the spinal cord. Now we need to see how it feels. So I'm not rich. I am rich. Because that's what the new character is going to believe. The new character is going to believe. I'm very abundant. Everything unfolds to me perfectly at perfect timing. The synchronicity is ridiculous. I could tell stories and people would laugh. They wouldn't even believe me. Because right now, you are experiencing synchronicities of, and you call it bad luck. I can't believe how much bad luck. Things just never work out for me, which is the opposite of what you want. But isn't that amazing that things just seem to happen? I remember back in the day when I was going through this depressed mode, everything sort of broke down at the same time. Everything broke down at the same time. Refrigerator was brand new, broke down. Um, dishwasher broke down. Um, car broke down, was brand new. It was just like felt anything electronic was starting to break down. My phone broke. It was just like... If someone looked at my life now, they would just be pissing themselves laughing because it was just too much of a coincidence of just one thing breaking apart after another. And it was all there just to reinstate the vibration I was vibrating. You can't vibrate at another, at the Im imagery one, because you're not ready. And how do you know you're going to be ready? When you're having the experience. I'm ready for this experience to go and say hi to Marie at the airport. I'm so ready. Like, I'm going to walk straight into it. Are you ready to walk into the experience that you want? Have you done the creative part? Have you done the outline? Have you got your different colors? Have you got ideas of what you're going to paint on this beautiful paint board? What do they call it? Have you got all your colors? Have you got all your textures? Have you got an idea? No, darlings. So what we're going to do in this last week is going to walk you through one element at a time that then you can play with and add on to your creative, imaginary abilities and use them and become after at them because that is part of your experience is to have an experience as the creator, take the bits and then bring them back home and create another one until that spinal cord is done and the whole imagery of this new character, how it's feeling, what it's defining, you can play it out and it's more enjoyable to spend time in your head than actually out here. And that is the symbol, darling, that you're ready. You're ready and you're ready. And just watch how then reality here just adjusts itself for you to walk straight into it. That's why I keep saying there's no achieving. There's no doing. The achievement is to achieve the vibrational signature that is now appropriate and accurate for that character. But if you guys are going to be hanging around, gripped to this character, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to get frustrated. And that's why they say you've got to surrender. I love it when these beautiful teachers are trying to find words. You need to surrender. Yes, you need to surrender to being so obsessive about this one character that needs to become something else. Uh. You know, surrender. Let go. Let go. And then there's someone else that said, you need to sacrifice. Of course you're going to sacrifice version 1.0 for 2.0. I mean, that's what you do with your phone. You just toss it because the new one's here. <laughs> you know? And that's exactly what you're going to do with characters. There's a new version. <laughs> Let's go with that. That one's more fun. It makes coffee. Do you know what I mean? And guess what? 
the new version comes with a completely new perspective. And with this new perspective comes through new definitions. And guess what? There's going to be new imagery. Oh, there's going to be new indications. And then you're going to realize there's a box with goodies, but then there's something else missing. And we get to do it over again, over again, over again, over again. It never ends. And it's not meant to end. Because who you really are is infinite and eternal, darling. Where the character is very limited. I think someone I heard said, die before you die. And that's basically a good verbalization. The character is 1.0, is no longer in your awareness. The light is now focused on there. The light's not focused there. That character is no longer in your awareness. You walk into an experience when you're ready up to speed when you're vibration up to speed. How do you get ready? You practice it. Now it's going to feel a bit like uncomfortable. As they said, it's like brushing your teeth with the other hand that you used to. I brush it with my left. Yeah. So it's like brushing it with your right hand. So, I mean, like I drive here on the left hand side because we're like the English Commonwealth countries. But when I go to the United States, I pop into the right side and for me, it doesn't change anything. Why? Because I literally look at my feet. The pedals are all the same. The fact that I'm sitting on the other side is irrelevant. I just allow my imagination to just say, the pedals are the same. And all I'm doing is now using the clutch. On the United States, you don't really use the clutch with the other hand. You make yourself feel up to speed with the new imagery. The imagery, the imagery, no one talks about it. Oh my God, people, the imagery is juicy. The imagery just hits that sweet spot because now you are attuned to what you've become aware of from the empty box. You've attuned yourself. You've identified what was missing and now you've included it into your imagery. You've included it into your visual. You've included it into your vibration. There's inclusion. So from the perceiving of the missing, now there's an inclusion. How does that feel? I am rich. I am worthy. I am powerful. I am important. There's an inclusion. But do you believe it immediately? No, because the character is still being formed. We're creating the character. We're creating. Do you just think that this just happened? This has been in the making for the past year or so. And this is what it is now experiencing. Do I, do I have elements? of imagination. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Is this limited? It is adored right now. It is greatly appreciated for the experiences I'm having because I'm, I'm experiencing boxes and I'm experiencing boxes and I'm experiencing more boxes. Then I look into the box and then I identify what's missing. Ah, oh, new element. I appreciate those empty boxes like you won't believe. Do those empty boxes, when I receive the box, it makes me feel excited. When I realize there's an emptiness in the box, I do also feel that. I get, you get to experience all of them. And if you didn't have that indication of slight fear or lack, if you didn't have those indications, you wouldn't know that it's time now to get up to speed and get ready for 2.0, to get ready for new elements to be defined imagined and felt. You're always going to perceive the box and you're going to get excited. You're always going to come to an awareness that the box is empty and you're going to be inspired of what you can put in it. And the story of the box will continue. There's first a general outline and then you say, what do I do with it? And to check in, you need to check what current 
programming is allowing for this experience. What perspective are you now holding as true? And only once you find what you're holding as truth that you believe with all your heart is the perspective. Now look at the other side of the coin. Now look at the other side. All the information is there. Because each perspective will always bring you the box and will always show you the one side of the box and then you, the observer, will look at the other side and say, oh, new element, got that. And then you get yourself up to speed. It's all imagery happening within you, inside of you. The knower, the one that's aware of the imagery, the one that's aware of experience and the one that's aware of imagery, the one that's aware of imagery, the one that's experiencing, the one that is aware of the character. Can you see that there's so much more to this? There isn't a life and your life and you're going through the motions. There's experiencing, there's the box, and then there's the emptiness of the box, and then there's the inspiration of what you can do with the box. There's the broom, then there's the vacuum cleaner. There was the horse, and then there's the aeroplane. Now, what character do you want to create in order to then have the experience until it realizes that the box is empty, and then we create another and another? And another. And this never ends. Therefore, the variety of different emotions are all necessary. We do not want to eliminate lack. Let's say it again. We do not want to eliminate lack. Why? It is the indication that we've just become aware of the emptiness of the box. And now we're inspired to say, what do I want to put in the box? And we add another element. So do we want to get rid of emotions? No, they are guiding us to different experiences and different characters in order to play them out and have the experience. Do we want to eliminate the belief in lack? No, you've just, it made you aware. It made you aware of the different stuff. But know yourself first that you are not this. And it's easy to let go of it, thank it, be grateful for the experience. Let it go. Don't turn back and keep your eye focused to get ready for this new vibration. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Are we in any rush to get ready? Because if you're in a rush to get out of where you are because it's just too painful then you're still believing you're lacking something. You still believe to be the character. This is why meditation is essential, that you just allow yourself to realize who you really are. Because there's, there's that, I've got to do this, I've got to get, get out of here, let's change the vibration. Let's, you're not ready. It's tasting. You're enjoying the creator. The painter is enjoying He's not rushing it. You are the one painting. And you're enjoying it. And now you're up to speed with it. i got to go to the airport. Bye-bye, darling. Sorry, I can't see all the, the comments. But I will read them. And if there's any questions, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I love you all. Have a good day.